what can you build in a warship if you have no restrictions but size? That question is generally more of a thought experiment. After all, just because you can build something, that doesn't mean you should. But this question can sometimes result in interesting designs, the most famous of which are definitely the so-called Tillman battleships, more formally known as the Maximum Battleship, the absolute largest and most capable ships for their time. A what if the United States Navy could build ships constrained by nothing but the size of the Panama Canal. Does that make these ships at all realistic? No, not really, but then these were never really meant to be built. Certainly the Navy had no real desire for something quite this excessive. As we look at these designs, the reason for the Navy's dislike will become clear. But before we can get to that, some background is necessary. The Maximum Battleship came out of the struggle between Congress and the Navy on funding and ship construction. Sometimes the Navy would come out ahead, like in the World Wars. At other times, Congress held the purse strings tightly, such as between the Civil War and World War I. And this period is where Tillman comes into the picture. Senator Benjamin Tillman, nicknamed Pitchfork Tillman, due to threatening to prod Grover Cleveland with a pitchfork. Although it might as well come from his generally aggressive language and demeanor. Suffice it to say that Tillman was not a nice man, for quite a few reasons outside the scope of today's topic. For this video, his issues with the Navy are the important part to cover. In this regard, Tillman was part of the general anti-Navy segment of Congress. A varied bunch of senators and representatives generally only united in their opposition to naval spending, be it from isolationist thoughts or concerns about the budget. Either way, this was a powerful force in Congress at the turn of the 20th century. That said, Tillman had no real power to influence decisions here, or at least nothing more than any other congressman could muster. This was true even when he joined the Senate Committee on Naval Affairs. But this wouldn't stop him. Tillman was a firebrand and was quite capable of pushing his ideas even to the point of getting the rest of the committee, or at least enough of it, on board with his plan. Until, finally, Tillman was able to put his idea in front of the Navy, which rounds off the background, so now it's time for the Maximum Battleships. The first iteration of these came around 1912 and 1913. Tillman put forward a resolution the text of which I'll link in the description. In simple terms, it was basically asking the Navy, point blank, to submit a design for the largest possible battleship. The biggest guns, the heaviest armor, all that fun stuff. The reasoning behind this was fairly simple. It came from unhappiness with how battleships were getting larger and more expensive every time the Navy came to Congress. So at some point, the idea came about to stop that from happening. Let's build the biggest and most powerful ship possible and stop all of this gradual growth. At this point, as the typical story goes, Tillman revealed a lack of understanding about naval development. Even ignoring arms races, technology is always marching on. Ships would naturally become larger and more expensive to keep up with foreign developments. That is the usual story. Of course, Friedman gives an alternate account. He cites Tillman's issue being the Navy going behind Congress's back. That if they needed larger ships than were authorized, then by God they should just say so. Ignoring for the moment 
that the Navy tried that, and Congress repeatedly went, ha ha, no, build what we give you, and be happy you're even getting that. Either way, Friedman also notes Tillman, sharing private worries, that Congress would authorize two week of ships. To directly quote the book, it is very important in my mind to have one of the best battleships that we can build now, more so than to have two weaker vessels. So, according to Friedman, public annoyance at the Navy sidestepping congressional authority, but private desire to have the best ships possible instead of more and weaker ships. Make of that what you will. Regardless, that resolution came in 1912. By 1913, the Bureau of Construction and Repair had come up with a response. Unfortunately, I don't believe any drawings survive. Friedman notes the estimate as this. 12 14-inch guns with 17-inch thick belt armor. The speed, meanwhile, was to be 23 knots. All of this on a ship displacing 38,000 tons. This was 6,500 tons more than Pennsylvania, the actual battleship that would be authorized. With 3.5 inches of extra armor and 2 knots of extra speed. This would also have been horrifically expensive, so a cheaper alternative was also submitted, mostly by shortening the ship and slowing her down to 20 knots. Tillman was unhappy with that speed, as you can probably imagine. He wanted 25 or more knots, which the Navy pointed out would just be a battle cruiser, because that speed would require deleting up to four of the 14-inch guns, in addition to much of the armor. Ultimately, nothing would come of this first study. There's some reference out there to it influencing the design of USS Pennsylvania. How much, if any, of that is true isn't clear from what I've read. Either way, that was the end of things for a couple years. This would only pick up again when we arrive to 1916, where two things are important. First, Tillman had become the chairman of the Committee on Naval Affairs. And secondly, the Great War was in full swing, with Congress finally letting the Navy run wild on construction. So Tillman went back to the Navy once again. He wanted another maximum battleship with absolutely no limits beyond the size of the Panama Canal. That meant a length of just under 1,000 feet, or 305 meters, to fit inside the canal locks, and a beam of no more than 108 feet, or 33 meters. In addition, the draft couldn't exceed 38 feet, or 11.6 meters, although that limitation was even tighter in practice. The Navy had to worry about harbor depth, and that resulted in a limitation of just under 33 feet, or 10 meters. This new request resulted in four design studies. The Navy wasn't really enthused by the idea, recognizing how wildly impractical all of this really was. Even so, under Pitchfork Tillman's prodding, the Navy set about the task. Construction and repair used the South Dakota design, then under development, as a minimum. So, no less than 12 16-inch guns. Let's look at those designs briefly before touching on the final result of all of this work. The first thing to note here is that all of these designs share the same general scale. 975 feet, 297 meters in length, with a beam of 108 feet and a draft of 32 feet, 9 inches. That was the limit set by the Panama Canal and harbor depth. The ships also shared a similar look, a flush deck and a high freeboard, with that freeboard 
allowing for a return of hull-mounted casements, now that these were much higher above the waterline. However, the maximum battleship designs vary in the details, such as armor and firepower. In general, each design had a main focus, be it armor, speed, or firepower, at least on the first three. Starting with the first design, now commonly referred to as Tillman 1. This design displays 70,000 tons, already very large and in charge for a design dating to 1916. No ship would exceed this until Yamato decades later. That tonnage allowed for an interesting choice in design. The main battery was relatively pedestrian by later Tillman standards. The same 12 16-inch 50 caliber guns of South Dakota. Where this design got funky was in the armor protection. No less than 18 inches, 457 millimeters, on the main belt. Compared to the 13.5 inches of the standard type. Needless to say, that is a lot of armor. Yamato had 16 inches, or 410 millimeters, for sake of comparison. As if this wasn't enough, the design was also intended to be 26.5 knots in speed, making her much more heavily armored, but also faster than South Dakota. And things only get more wacky as we move on. Design 2 took Sanity out behind the shed and clubbed it over the head. The armor protection returned to a more typical 13 inches on the belt, and the speed remained the same at 26.5 knots. However, the main battery became 24 16-inch guns in four sextuple turrets. Or, if you prefer... Four six-gun turrets. Just imagine what it would look like to see this ship fire those turrets. Or for that matter, what it would feel like. Perhaps understandably, the Navy went to something a bit more sane with Tillman 3. This time they decided that speed was the most important factor. That resulted in going back to the 12 16-inch guns with the same 13-inch armor, but moving up to 180,000 shaft horsepower for 30 knots, a true fast battleship in both speed and armor protection, with the displacement going down to 63,500 tons. If any Tillman design can be considered sane, it's probably this one. Although I have my doubts on if it would work in practice. Regardless, at this point, the Navy moved to design four. This would provide the basis for the final maximum battleship designs of this period. The tonnage went up to 80,000 tons. This would become the new standard going forward for these designs. That displacement increase came from the main battery and the armor protection. Tillman 4 is basically a combination of Tillman 1 and Tillman 2, reverting to the 24 16-inch guns and the 18-inch armor belt, with the only real concession coming in speed, which was dropped down to around 25 knots. This was ridiculous to say the least. So naturally, a suggestion was made to drop all the 16-inch guns in favor of 18-inch weapons. Thus, Tillman 4-1, which swapped to 13 18-inch 50 caliber guns, in five twin and one triple turret. The armor protection was also lowered to 16 inches, which would be the new standard. This was more reasonable at least in regard to the number of guns, which means that things had to get wacky again with Tillman 4-2. Four, 
generally consider the apex of the Tillman designs. That ship swapped to 15 18-inch guns and five triple or three-gun turrets. That would have made this the most heavily armed ship to ever sail the seas, at least if she had been completed. But, well, that doesn't really matter. The design was too ridiculous. While the Navy presented it to Congress in 1917, that wasn't with the intention of building the thing. No one in the Navy wanted something so silly, and no one, not even Tillman, would have expected Congress to pay for such a ludicrous ship. So, as you could expect, this went nowhere. The maximum battleship design was dropped, and when Tillman died in 1918, the concept died with him. Mostly. The maximum battleships would be trotted out here and there, mostly by staffers who didn't know better. And another study would be made in 1934, although this had no connection to the earlier ones, other than the general concept of as big as the canal can accommodate. Except this time, 18-inch guns were yesterday's news. The 1934 studies featured eight 20-inch guns in four twin turrets. These were design studies as a response to the Japanese possibly breaking the naval treaties, which, as it turned out, they did, but no one knew that at the time. These designs were no more serious than the Tillman's. Even if it is interesting to imagine hating a Japanese-held island out of existence with 20-inch guns. Regardless, that's where the maximum battleship came to its end. The largest design ever seriously considered was the relatively pedestrian Montana-class battleship. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.